But today we're talking about the importance of resilient pastures for international competitiveness of our products. Um, I'm uh, obviously from the dairy sector. Um, most of our data that's easily available is from the dairy sector. Uh, however, everything that I say applies equally to other parts of the pastoral sector. Sector, You can surprise me um, uh, if you think that's not the case. Okay, so what do we mean by competitiveness? So what we're talking about here is, in the dairy sector case, the dairy sector providing what the world wants, and that's a quality of product. It's a price point for that product, and it's carrying on the you know, the other attributes for that product that they want. Um, and the world includes New Zealand, so that includes that social licence that's required from the public in, of New Zealand. But it has to make a decent return, or provide a decent return to all those inputs, capital, labour, etc. Um, otherwise, it's not sustainable. The resources will get sucked to a different use if this is not the case. Okay, so who are our competitors? Um, three broad categories of competitors. Uh, we've got our other grass-fed producers. A really good example is Ireland, operating a similar style of production system, largely from grass. Uh, then we've got the US as a good example of a crop-based or TMR um, diet, a very different production system. And then we've got a completely different category of substitutes, your um, nut juices, if you will, or uh, synthetic milks. Um, so we'll leave that to the side for today and focus on the two others, but starting with um, the US. Um, this is the Fair Oaks farm in Indiana in the US. So 40,000 cows, 450 staff, 65 milk tankers full, leaving the gate every day. Um, what's the feed base that's supporting that? It's, uh, well, it's two-thirds of the money is going on, uh, on that feed base, but it's 80% maize and 15% grass. Why do we see very large farms like that? This is what um, economies of size look like for the US. So on the horizontal axis here, you've got the uh, herd size going up to 2,500, and on the vertical axis, you've got um, costs and revenues. So the blue line is the median um, cost, and the blue shaded area is the 25th to the 75th percentile, okay? So if you look at less than 500 cows, uh, you can see, at least in that year, 2016, most small farms were not making any money. They were going backwards, okay? Whereas you get up to the larger end of town, most of those farms at the large end of town, very large end of town, were still making money. Okay, so that's what's driving this, uh, this pressure. So in the US, you've got this rapid, train, rapid change being driven, so less farms over more than a decade, probably several decades, 4% less per year. Um, indeed, traditional area like Wisconsin, losing 10% of their farms per year. So we're moving away from traditional regions and small farms, away from pasture to higher cow production supported by more uh, TMR diets, and concerningly, these large, efficient farms actually have a positive trend in operating profit margin, which we don't see in other parts of the US, or the smaller parts of the US, or other um, international sectors. Does that apply to New Zealand? So here's some data um, uh, from Dairy Base. Look, what does economies of size look like in our pasture systems? So what you'll see is you'll see a steep part down to about, you know, three to 500 cows. Once you've got one to two, uh, let's say one and a half to two and a half labour units working fairly efficiently, you're not seeing large economies of size going forwards. So it's pretty flat with some evidence that it's starting to tip out at larger numbers, uh, tip up at larger numbers. So um, limited economies of size. So what should New Zealand conclude from this in terms of competitiveness? We shouldn't try to be the US. Uh, milk solids per cow does not equal profit. Um, we haven't got time to go into any of the data for that today, but there are limited economies of size in pasture. If you want to think more about that, there's a paper from Becker in 2006 that uh, digs a bit more into that. But what we do need to do is understand what is our competitive advantage as New Zealand, and it's high pasture harvest, 
it's low cost per hectare and being clear about the value of additional capital. You know, if I invest more in this business, what's the return I'm going to get from that? Um, a picture we'd all be familiar with, the strong association between pasture harvest and profitability. No need to dwell on that. But what's, what have been the trends over time? Um, so here's New Zealand, starting off at a relatively high level, but that trend over time, over nearly 20 years, has been pretty static. Okay? So what's worse than being at a high level with a static trend? Um, being at a low level with a static trend, and uh, Uruguay and Argentina fit in that category. Um, who else could we think about? We could think about the traditional area of Australia, Victoria, um, three distinct regions, but you know, Victoria is where most of the milk comes from. Again, pretty flat. Um, Ireland, though, coming from a low level, but they've put a lot of focus in everything from the um, uh, research, development, extension, that farm systems understanding to really push this um, pasture component. So they're making progress. Uh, other places that are making progress, the Tasmanian part of Australia is actually making progress. So we can't ride off the whole um, nation um, much as uh, we could in rugby, for example. Um, South Africa is really the standout performer. So the focus and the uh, intent that they've put behind growing their pasture harvest um, uh, really stands out here. So I've deliberately uh, focused on pasture, um, whereas you know cropping might seem an, seem an obvious alternative to boost yield. Uh, and we've seen, for example, fodder beets in wintering has been, you know, uh, seen a high rate of take up and fits well within the system at a proportion. Uh, but a few counter examples or that get, might lead you to more caution, uh, more cropping, uh, reducing profitability um, from an optimization model approach, uh, looking at all species and mixes of species that were available, so about 30 different options. Uh, the 1.75 tonne milk solids trial, so a low stocking rate with you know, 200 kilos of N uh, was better than options using import or maize silage. Um, cropping systems, more profitable than grass but with a very small gap um, from a systems trial in Australia. And more recently some looking at summer crop area in the Waikato while there was an association with higher summer crop area and dry matter production, the effect on profit was um, pretty minimal. Um, coming from dairy-based data. Okay, so that's the pasture side of it. The other things we're talking about with our competitiveness, operating costs, and we're seeing upward trends here. These aren't inflation adjusted, so you would expect over time inflation um, to lead to a trend going upwards. Um, New Zealand's sort of middle of the pack there, um, a steeper um, rate of increase in costs in Argentina and Uruguay. South Africa's managed to dampen down that, so the trend is not as steep for South Africa. Uh, the US, interestingly, exactly the same trend as New Zealand, but at a higher level, and Ireland is bucking the trend here in actually being able to pull that down. Admittedly, lots of stuff going on there with quota in the earlier part of the uh, period, but you know the real focus on that going forwards. But we, one of the things we were talking about with our competitiveness is we need a return to all our um, factors of production, which includes capital. So how do you deal with the um, asset values? Well, you can use an economic cost that accounts for that with the lease value. And here we see that because there are higher land values in New Zealand, okay, that um, pushes, these, um, uh, pushes these competitors together significantly. And indeed, if you think about the US in this example, um, that's the average for the US uh, at the end of that red line. And if you think of those best, most efficient producers from the US, they would be, you'd have to think they'd be getting close to the New Zealand average. So um, that is the imperative for us to be quite focused on what we do, not by copying the US, but coming up with what's a competitive system, building on our strengths, that is going to uh, allow us to continue to be um, competitive going forwards. So in summary, 
how I think about competitiveness, this triple focus of pasture, you know, low costs and disciplined capital investment. And my, you know, my initial reflections are that a feed base that's resilient to, you know, climatic uh, problems, the markets that we have to sell into and our need to limit our footprint, is that primarily a direct, a direct graze perennial? Um, and I'd be quite interested to see what, what would come out over the next couple of days, but that's my, my sort of initial thinking in that space. Thank you.